This is the alpha version of Deadwin Pass, best known for the massive original version of Karasan. And this is my hunter on an official classic realm. Alpha Deadwin Pass is one of the few original zones that have remained within the game since the very first playable version. And while it is very well hidden away, players may still visit it, at least for a while. Today, we'll take a closer look at the history of the zone, and not least, its main feature, the Karasan Raid. As well as showing how players can still enter this zone in the classic version of the game. This is the story of Alpha Karasan. This untextured Alpha Karasan is often considered to be its original version, but this isn't actually the case, as development on this large tower began much earlier, in 2001. And while it was eventually completed, being much larger than any other indoor area at the time, Blizzard decided to switch out which programs they used to design dungeons, and therefore all work on this version was scrapped. Although one year later, work on Karasan began once again. This work led to the alpha version of the tower, which at the time of WoW's first playable version, patch 0.5.3, was located near the middle of Alpha Deadburn Pass. A zone that only really contained the Karasan Tower, while lacking in all other gameplay features, such as its trails being hard for players to navigate, as well as there being no NPCs at all. There were some issues with its entrance, but overall, the outside of the tower was pretty much finished, while at the same time, the inside of Karasan had no textures, although its interior was actually made. During this early alpha version, the rest of Deadwind Pass already had the same atmosphere as the one players are familiar with from Classic. But the layout was completely different, and some of the zone's areas were unreasonably hard for players to access. In patch 0.8, which is in the beta, Karasan's interior had been finished, and it was still located near the middle of Deadwind Pass. As you can see here, the tower takes up much of the zone's space. And a contributor to Karasan's size, was that the interior of the tower was made to fit the entirety of the raid. Rather than having a portal leading to an instant zone that could then be larger than the tower looks from the outside. A system that is used in most of WoW's instances. This decision constrained the playability of Karasan as most of the space had to be dedicated to stairs. Making it difficult to find space for boss fights, which had to accommodate up to 40 players. For this reason, as well as the tower being unreasonably large, the beta version of the tower was scrapped in patch 0.10, just one month prior to WoW's release date. Instead, a much thinner tower was used, and unlike before, where the tower stood on a plateau close to the center of the zone, Karasan was moved down into a valley in the southern part of the zone. While Blizzard's primary intention with this was to avoid issues with far clip, also known as view distance, as the tower was so tall that the top wouldn't render to players standing at its foot, and much less on the lower elevation of the zone. It also had the additional benefit of freeing up some much needed space around the rest of the zone. Having been remade so close to the game's release date, the Karasan Raid was nowhere near completion. Although it was initially intended to be released sometime during Vanilla, among other raids such as Blackwing Lair, Ankaraj, and importantly Sulgurub, which is a raid that we'll come back to later. When World of Warcraft officially released in America in 2004, both the Tower of Karasan and its zone, the Deadwind Pass, had been updated. But neither the tower nor the zone had any gameplay tied to it. Something that wasn't unique at the time, as other zones, such as Silithus, barely had any content either. But throughout Vanilla, when the other zones were gradually finished, and despite the early ideas for Karasan, it was never opened, and Deadwind Pass never got as much as a single quest. During the original vanilla, both the alpha version of Karasan and Deadwind Pass were technically still in the game files, and were located in the far corner of the Eastern Kingdoms map, although it wasn't accessible by any means. When the pre-patch for WoW's first expansion, the Burning Crusade, went live, the village outside Karasan was updated, with the level of its inhabitants being increased from around level 60 up to 70 which was to become the new level cap once Burning Crusade released. Although at this time, Karasan had still not been opened. With the release of the Burning Crusade, Karasan finally opened as a 10 player raid, which unlike the alpha and beta version, was much larger than the tower itself. 
The Wade was very well received, and despite featuring a vehicle bus, it's still considered to be one of the best raids in the game's history. Throughout the following expansions, Karasan and its surroundings received a few updates, with the tower being remade into a dungeon in the Legion expansion, as well as some quests and a riddle being added to the Karasan crypt, which can be found on a small hill behind the tower. Karasan was only one of several raids and dungeons whose development began during the game's alpha and beta stages. Another one was the 20-player Su Group Raid, which was opened in patch 1.7 around a year after WoW's release. And this raid is relevant as it's an instanced outdoor area, where both the raid location itself as well as some of the scenery surrounding the raid is included in its map, albeit instanced as part of Su Group, meaning that there aren't any NPCs or gameplay in areas that weren't meant for the raid. This is actually fairly common for instanced areas, with some of them just using small parts of their surroundings, while others can include multiple nearby zones. What makes Su Group special is that development of the raid scenery began in the alpha stages, which during this time was simply titled Unmapped Dungeon, as was most of the unfinished raids and dungeons at the time. This meant that when Su Group's instance area was first created, the neighboring zone of Deadwind Pass still had its original design. And seeing as Su Group just used whatever scenery lied around the instance area at the time of its creation, the original version of Deadwind Pass still exists within the classic version of Su Group. Due to Su Group being surrounded by tall mountains in every direction, the biggest hurdle for players is getting out of the intended instance area. Something that is feasible within the current classic version, which is based on the Wrath of the Lich King expansion. While there may be other viable methods, the way I did it was utilizing a combination of the Hunter class's disengage ability, which is a spell that sends the Hunter flying backwards, in combination with the Readiness talent, that resets all cooldowns, including disengage, allowing the Hunter to double jump. Disengage has the limitation of requiring the Hunter to be in combat, but this is easily achieved by pulling an NPC from the raid and then letting the pet tank it. Once on the top of the mountainside, the old Deadwind Pass comes into view, and while the Karasan Tower is missing, the old plateau where it stood is still visible. And when running around the zone, you start to understand why it was redesigned, as going from one part of the zone to another isn't all that intuitive, and even in some cases, requiring precise jumps from ledge to ledge. If you would like to explore this piece of the game's history for yourself, you can still visit it in the Classic Wrath version, but you won't have that long, because when Classic WoW moves on to the Cataclysm, the map for Sugurub will be remade, meaning that the scenery surrounding the instance will be updated to match the Cataclysm version of Deadwind Pass. The good news being that this will allow you to see the famous Smiley that's been sitting underneath the new version of Karasan since it was moved in the late beta version 0.10. I spent a long time finding a path up the mountainside, and if you'd like to avoid this, you can copy the route I found, which will get you to the old Deadwind Pass in just over 5 minutes. Feel free to click the video on the screen or in the description, which will take you to the full route I used.